You know what goes through my mind every time I see a politician like Joe Biden speak? Rumble Reggie retard! <laughs> yeah, super fucking Mario for the win. What did you expect, huh? Jesus Christ. What better time to reference Beethoven's Fifth Symphony called Fate than right now? By the way, the vaccines don't fucking work. Yeah, who's the retard now? No, I am not on crack. Yes, this is generally how I am on a daily basis. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this, the season 8 finale of Spot the Liberal. I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. I'm telling you, to all you people out there who say that the majority of slave owners were white, guess what? You're not right. You're wrong. See, what you people don't understand is, only 1.4% of white people ever owned slaves. So blaming the entire white race is racism at its finest. You understand? I mean, it is not that hard to fathom. It's not that difficult to see. I mean, you guys got to understand. It's only a matter of time before everything goes to hell in a handbasket. You people know this. You have always known this. It is common sense. And right about now, you know, you you people want to say that Russia interfered in our election in 2016 and again in 2020. Well, guess what? They didn't. You understand? I mean, it's it's actually remarkable to me how stupid people are. Oh, and by the way, did I mention Russia did not interfere in the election? Did I mention that? <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought. That's the opening chord to the Russian National Anthem. In case you're ever wanting to figure that stuff out. You see, there is so much bullshit in the mainstream media. How much bullshit can a bullshitter shit if a bullshitter can bullshit? Kind of makes you wonder how the media shat all over Brat Kavanaugh, but refused to cover the story that was Hunter's laptop. Why is it such a big deal that Hunter's laptop wasn't covered and Brett Havanaugh's yearbooks were? Well, I can name one reason. Part of the reason is because the media is biased against conservatives. The media is biased against conservatives because they don't give a shit about people who are either patriots, law-abiding citizens, or immigrants who legally came here through a port of entry and passed a citizen test to get naturalized. Unlike Ilhan Omar, who is an illegal immigrant herself. And you know, another... Another reason why, she's yet another reason why Muslims should not be allowed in Congress. And for a long time, they weren't allowed in Congress. Until 1990, when Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, and all these other ridiculously stupid people overturned the ban. 
They let Muslims into Congress, and we got a black guy named Barack Obama who hailed originally from Kenya to become our 44th president of the United States. And also the second worst. You know who's the worst? Joe Biden. Because in just 120 days, he has completely shit the bed on this country in ways... Oh, and by the way, Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood praises the Democrats for abandoning Israel in times of war. What, are you fucking kidding me? Here's my suggestion to people who want real hope and change in this country. No more Muslims. No more Muslims, period. End of story. That's it. No more. So, a user named Alatarda Blue at Auslan Group 1. Sorry if I butchered that. Alatar the Blue says, So wearing the mask is unnatural. Well, living like this is unnatural. If uncomfortable masks remind people of that, that's good. Unfortunately, most of them are too stupid to understand cause effect. I, for one, cannot wait for the next more lethal viral pandemic to thin their ranks. And it will. It's going to thin their ranks quite a bit if it hasn't already. Because I'm telling you right now, if, if there is one thing, one thing that you should know about Democrats, it's that they do not give a damn about any of us. They do not care about black people. They do not care about white people. They do not care about patriots or Americans in general. I'd rather be an American than a Democrat, okay? A straight freaking American who does not give in to the demands of a government that has been crapping all over them for decades. Donald Trump Jr. with his latest tweet. As a bully, Chrissy Teigen was the worst offender imaginable and yet was boosted and sold as all things she's not. Wholesome. Funny. Nice. It's only a matter of time till she comes back rebranded as a victim. He even did a video on his Rumble.com page on her vicious hypocrisy. See, people like Chrissy Teigen do not belong in America. They don't belong in this country because they are terrible, terrible, terrible people. Real Americans are honest about how they feel about some things and give a shit about other people, not just themselves. Real Americans don't pressure other Americans to attempt or even commit suicide. Chrissy Teigen is not a real American. She is a joke, okay? Anyone that bought into her bullshit for 10 years ought to be ashamed, really, because Chrissy Teigen, as Donald Trump put it, Donald Trump Jr., I should say, was a bully. Speaking of whom, Chrissy Teigen's cravings cookware gets dropped by Macy's three days, three days, after Target drops her dumbass. And yet you wonder why Chrissy Teigen is seeing for herself the ramifications of her actions. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you were all lied to about Chrissy Teigen. You were all lied to about her. You were told that she is a nice person, that she's wholesome, that she's funny. She's not. She's a terrible human being. I know this because I've been surrounded by terrible human beings my whole life. 
prior to age 23. Why do I say this? Well, I can say one thing. My family wasn't always the best influence on me, but even though they weren't the best people, they still did what they could for me, and at least they gave a shit about me, and at least they cared. Hard-working people they are. Not the best people, but they're hard-working, and they're very opinionated as well. So here's the thing. When people are having their guns taken away by their own government, it's because they vote a bunch of morons in that don't need to be elected, that didn't deserve to be elected in the first place, and every single time a government of this corrupted state orders the conversation of guns, of guns from their own citizens, in comes the Supreme Court to give them a prison beating, and a deserved one at that. The Supreme Court, according to AmericanMilitaryNews.com, rules a warrantless home gun conf confiscation as unconstitutional in a unanimous 9-0 to zero vote. Unanimous! Because even Justice John Roberts, who is the most illegitimate Supreme Court justice in American history, knows that a government confiscating guns from its own citizens is anti-American. It's not constitutional. Even he knows that. And he's a dumb piece of shit. So, Facebook user Paul Onesis. Exposes six Uranium One facts, six reasons as to why Secretary, so called Hillary Clinton, betrayed America and sold out to the Iranian deceive. Number one, the former head of Russia's uranium company made four hidden donations to the Clinton Foundation totaling a grand sum of almost $2.5 million. $2.35 million, to be more precise. Number two, her husband, the pedophile himself, Bill Clinton, badged a, a half of a million dollar speech in Moscow. He bagged $500,000, a half a million bucks in Moscow, Paid for by a Kremlin-backed bank. And yet they wanted to say that Donald Trump colluded with Russia. No. It was the Clintons and the Democrats who colluded with Russia. Not Trump. See, they're guilty of the same things that they accuse people like Donald Trump and people like you and I of not doing. Number three. The FBI uncovered evidence that Russian nuclear industry officials engaged in bribery, kickbacks, extortion, and money laundering. Number four, the Clinton Foundation received $145 million from foreign investors involved in the nuclear bullshit that was the uranium deal. Number five, FBI agents have an eyewitness and documents to support the most explosive parts of the nuclear bullshit that is the Uranium One story. That is more than enough to sentence Hillary Clinton to death. But they're not going to go after her. You know why they're not going to go after her? Because she's got liberal privilege. And finally, number six, mega donor and cocksucking sellout Frank Holmes lied about selling Uranium One before Clinton approved the Russian transfer. Frank Holmes is a terrible person, ladies and gentlemen. He is morally, mentally, and creatively bankrupt. 
Speaking of someone who's creatively bankrupt, CNN finally took the hint. They dropped that faggot Don Lemon show. What a fucking moron he is, huh? And I don't say that to discriminate either. I say it because it's true. The guy preaches about how gay people should be chastised for being gay, yet he's gay himself, right? The guy is in denial of the fact that he is a hypocrite. Everything that he says turns to crap. And he wonders why he's out of a job at CNN. The most illegitimate source of news in the world. Not even North Korea is this illegitimate. And their news station sucks. But at least it has some sort of truth to it. Nobody in CNN has an ounce of credibility to their names. Obviously, neither does Don Lemon. Here's the thing. Even the most scummy, shitty excuse of a news organization, like complete nonsensical nitwits, otherwise known as the Cable News Network, would drop someone after they know that that someone is full of crap. Here's the thing. Black Lives Matter is a joke. It's a scam. Black Lives Matter is brainwashing you. They are screwing you up the butt and you're just gladly taking it. Well, let me tell you why you shouldn't take it anymore. Because... They are bitching about the simple fact that blacks kill whites. And then whites kill blacks. Meanwhile, 80% of the crime that happens in this country is committed by a black person. And most of it is black-on-black crime. Yet, at the same exact time, they want to fill your head with lies about how they want racial justice in this country because a small minority of white people kill a small minority of black people. Twitter's Bill O'Reilly The same Bill O'Reilly that got unjustly and wrongfully fired from Fox News based on baseless claims that turned up no evidence. He comes up with this no-spin news bulletin. The University of California will no longer consider standardized tests. This is only the first step in the wokeness. Up next, the elimination of high school grades. Ladies and gentlemen, you have entered the no-spin zone. You know who quoted that? No-spin zone. You have entered the no-spin zone. You know who quoted that? Bill O'Reilly. This was his catchphrase for 20 years. On the O'Reilly factor. And then they got rid of O'Reilly and renamed it to simply the factor. Like they wanted to get rid of his lightness and erase all mentions of him. Like, give him the Crispin Benoit treatment because he didn't do anything, but we accused him of something, so we had to get rid of him because we think he did it when we know he didn't. What, are you fucking kidding me? This is why I'm not going back to school. Another bit of news... Airlines might start weighing their passengers. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? They're going to weigh passengers to get on airplanes now. 
To quote Donald Trump Jr., it will be truly spectacular when wokeism and the laws of physics clash. Apparently, Donald Trump Jr. can't wait for that to happen. I can't wait for that to happen either. It's going to happen at some point, so you might as well look forward to it, because it's going to happen! People, listen to me. Listen to me. It is so remarkably important that you know this, that you see this, because this is what's going to happen now. Because you guys wouldn't get off your lazy asses to prevent an illegitimate, bogus election from taking place, this is what happens now. This is the price we pay for being complacent. Republican Ronnie Jackson, in a latest tweet, a latest greatest tweet, he says that his constituents sent him to Congress to work on serious issues. Not nonsense like transnational white identity terrorism, also known by the lesser known acronym TWIT, meaning all the people in the House Foreign Committee and the Middle East Subcommittee are twits. They're twits, people. They're morons. Here's the thing. You gotta understand something, all right? If you really think about it, we are living in godless times. Ronnie Jackson said that he's calling on Democratic leaders of the House Foreign and the Middle East subcommittees to schedule a hearing on real issues, like Israel's, like Israelis more specifically. God, I butchered that. My apologies. We need to get rid of these idiots in Congress. Here's the thing. Jack Hadfield, in a recent tweet, he says, a new study from researchers at MIT, MIT, has confirmed that anti-maskers understand data analysis far better than their vaccinated, brainwashed opponents. For these anti-mask users, their approach to the pandemic is grounded in more scientific rigor, not less. I think I have an idea as to why that is. Because anti-maskers like me, we think logically. We actually give a damn. You get what I'm saying? It's pretty simple, people. I mean, stories like this really motivate me to search for the truth. And the truth is actually not hard to see. The truth is not difficult to find. All you gotta do is look for it, and it'll just fall into place like everything else. Duck, duck, go! Recently posted. Tech companies that abuse user trust and privacy are seeing their reputations plunge. The biggest loser among tech giants was Google, which faced PR headwinds in 2020 as the government sued it for monopolistic practices. You gotta understand, DuckDuckGo values your privacy. They wouldn't sell it to the dark web like YouTube would, like Google would, like Facebook would, like Microsoft would. They wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. 
because they actually have morals. They have standards. And their standards are not double either. Here's the thing, right? When you consider the facts, DuckDuckGo knows these truths to be self-evident, just like the founding fathers of this country knew these truths to be self-evident. Now here's, here's a funny story. Here's a funny story. Dinesh D'Souza came up with a story on Rumble. The headline. A gas station talks Joe and Hunter Biden with brutal, savage pics depicting their incompetency. I'm telling you people, what you're about to see is both very graphic and very funny at the same time. And I don't even know how that's possible. Now nah, I thought about it. And you gotta understand something, alright? You gotta understand something, okay? What you're about to see is the truth. And the truth, as you know, sets people free. It allows people to see the big picture. Allows people to understand the pain that the government causes you on a daily basis because they won't listen to history. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at these pictures. Biden Harris. You see something unusual about this sign? You should. Because the Biden Harris presidency ran on empty even before it started. They didn't even fill their car up. It's funny, isn't it? When you really think about it, it's so ironic and so funny. I mean, look at this though. Look at this. Is it so hard to ask? Is it so hard to ask for people to just look at the big picture and see that their government is completely screwing them up the butt? Is it too hard for people to see that? Because if you really think about it, if you legitimately think with your fucking brain and look at this with an open heart, you will understand how important the value of a constitutional republic is. Our nation is one of the last constitutional republics in existence, if not the last. Now check this out. Hunter Biden overdoses on coke. He got too high. Hopefully your gas prices won't get too high. Because if they do, you know who to blame for it. Joe motherfucking Biden! That's who to blame for. Here's the thing. Pictures like this are so accurate. They are so accurate as to how funny and truthful they are. Couple more stories after this, and then we're gonna get out of here. Let's close this episode and this season of Spot the Liberal off right. That way, we can truly understand we can truly understand something, okay? Look at the big picture. Next year, we can turn it around. We can still 
turn it around next year if we know who the fuck we're voting for that time. According to Wayne Dupree Media, young kids, according to the CDC director, need to wear face masks around unvaccinated people. So, what you're telling me is that the center of disease control wants to set the stage up for children to get bullied for simply doing what they told them to do, not what they need to do, which is to not get vaccinated and not wear a damn mask. Masks are only worn to hide one's shame. At least when I wear a mask, I look damn good in it. Okay. So when you really look at it, if you see the big picture, you will recognize that the Center for Disease Control is run by a fucking idiot. Just like the President of the United States is a fucking idiot. Just like one of the top surgeons in our nation, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is a fucking idiot. One more story. The middle class is abandoning the Labour Party in Britain. Next year, in the midterms, the same thing is going to happen to the Democratic Party. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because people are starting to see the truth. They're starting to see the reality that is the shitstorm of the Biden-Harris presence. And once they get into the voting polls next year, they're going to do everything in their power to vote these retarded Democrats the hell out of office because they don't need to be in Congress. Not anymore because they had their chance. They blew it. They fucked it up. They need to go. I'm Kevin Liskell Anderson wishing you a happy rest of your day. Next season is going to be really, 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 really fire. I just know it. Next season's going to be straight fire. I look forward to seeing you then. Bye for now.